Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be doing two lost foam casting experiments. The first one I did, you can see here, I wanted to surround a piece of pipe with a piece of aluminum. I knew I could do it, but I wanted to know how strong it was against it. Like, was I able to pull the pipe out of it easily or not? And we'll see that later on in the video. But for now, I'm going to start up my 2Auto 3KG electric furnace. And if you would like one for yourself, definitely check out my affiliate link below. I'm going to be melting down some scrap aluminum ingots that I have here in my little pail of random aluminum for melting. The 2Auto furnace really does come in handy when it's raining outside. It isn't really raining outside, but there is an overcast, and I don't like to take the chance. So we're going to start this thing off by heating up this metal, and it does take about 30 to 40 minutes to melt down aluminum. So while this is melting, let me show you the lost foam casting process if you're not familiar with it. I'm going to be using a coffee container, and I'm going to fill it up with some dry sand. I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom, vibrate it around, and then I'll put the piece that I'm going to cast first into the pan or the coffee can. Once I have that place, I'm going to continue filling it with the same dry sand that I used for the bottom of the container. I'm going to fill it all the way to the top, vibrating it in between to try to get really good compaction against the foam without actually destroying it or altering it in any way. When finished, I put a can on the top that I cut in half, and then I surrounded it with some more sand to really lock it into place. I really don't want it to fall over on me in the middle of my pouring. Afterwards, and sometime later, I'm going to check back at the furnace and see if the aluminum has been melted. It was. I'm going to add a little bit more just to be safe that I have enough for the cast. Just going to drop in another little scrap piece of aluminum that I have here. Give it a few more minutes later because the furnace was already hot. It shouldn't take long. We're going to check it one more time and see if we are ready to pour. The metal is fully molten, so now we're going to remove it from the furnace and pour the metal. I really do love lost foam casting. It vaporizes the foam and takes its shape. If you guys are watching this video and you're new to lost foam casting, definitely check out my other videos because I do this all the time. I make some pretty cool stuff. Now that we're all finished pouring, we're going to put the crucible back into the furnace because we're going to do another pour shortly. So we're going to wait for another 15 more minutes or so and we're going to remove the aluminum from the sand that we just cast. And we're going to see what it looks like. And in the beginning of the video, you saw it did work. And now we're going to be doing some tests because that's really what I wanted to find out. I was sure it was going to work. But before we start doing some tests, I want to cut off that sprue, which is the area that the aluminum flowed into the part. Now that that's removed, now it's time to see if I can actually turn this piece of pipe. I really want to see if it really locks it into place because aluminum does shrink when it solidifies. So I'm going to be using a pair of channel locks. I'm going to grip it and just try my hardest to turn this. And you can see I cannot get this to budge. This is really locked into place. And you can even see my teeth marks from the channel locks on the piece of pipe. So now I'm going to try to hit it with a hammer to see if I can really get it out. But it doesn't seem like it's moving at all. I really can't believe how much of a grip this has on the pipe. So a few more hard taps and I finally got it to move and you can see the marks it left on that pipe. So now because it's to the threads I'm going to see if I can actually unthread it from the pipe. I mean I'm not quite to the threads but I think I can get the threads to start and sure enough it actually does start to unthread or cut threads into that aluminum piece. But because it's national pipe thread, it's actually tapered. So it's going to get easier and easier the farther out I get it. 
I really do think this is pretty wild, this experiment, and see how it worked. And you can just see by looking at the pipe how tight that aluminum was against it. So I'm just going to remove it here and show you guys the threads that I was able to cut into this aluminum by unscrewing the piece of pipe. Now the threads aren't really that great because again it is tapered and it's a one-way thing. So I decided to actually make threads out of a piece of foam. So this is going to be my second experiment with lost foam casting. So I cut out this piece with my CNC slightly smaller than the piece of pipe and I threaded it onto the pipe. This is how I cut the threads into the foam. So now that I had this set up, I'm going to do the same exact process as I did before. Except for this one, I filled the pipe with sand and I put a piece of tape on the bottom of it because now the pipe is going to be facing down and I need something to hold back the aluminum from flowing down the pipe because that's what would happen. If the pipe was an open cavity, the aluminum would burn the foam but also flow down through the pipe. That's not what I wanted. But I'm not going to bore you guys with another mold making process you guys already saw in the beginning. So I'm going to jump right to the metal melting and the cast. So the metal is now molten and I'm going to do the second lost foam casting experiment and see how well this one works. So just like before, I'm going to place the crucible back into the furnace, wait about 15 or 20 minutes, and then remove the aluminum from the sand. I like to give it a good time before removing it and make sure it solidifies properly. I mean, you still can't handle it with your hands because it is quite hot. I didn't video it, but I did put it in some water so I can handle it with my hands. Now, I did notice there was a crack in the aluminum. I'm not sure if putting it under the water caused it but it's there so maybe next time if i wanted to make threads i would make the foam a little bit thicker so now let's bring it to the vise and try to unthread it and again the beginning it really took a grip to the pipe and you can see here even though it's threaded it still really gripped the pipe because i just tore the aluminum right off of it so oddly enough, I can't locate my pipe wrench because that would probably really work to get this off. But I do have a crescent wrench that has an interchangeable jaw and it acts as a pipe wrench. So now that's what I'm going to use to try to get this threaded piece of aluminum off of the pipe. And you can see it still is very difficult to turn, but it does turn as it should because it's threaded. So I'm going to finish removing this end cap, I guess you could call it, with a pair of channel locks because it is still quite tight. But once I get it loose enough, I will be able to remove it with my hands. Well, that was it. I was able to cut some threads in a piece of foam and make a threaded end cap. Now, this experiment was for a future video. So make sure you stay tuned for that video where I use this technique.